Good, so that's a little bit about sustainability. Um, uh, you have a nice slide here about fabrication. Let's talk about that too. Sure, so um, we've talked to, about steel quite a bit. Uh, this is a, I should mention, this is a combination of post-tension concrete and steel building. Um, and so the steel fabricator worked closely with the concrete guy as well as uh, the structural engineer to do, develop these um, part part models essentially. And as I mentioned, they would send these to us to confirm that their thinking is correct. And from those models, they were able to ex extract bills um, for purchase uh, of the steel parts. And a lot of these were fabricated offsite and craned onto the building. So the, the image on the right there, you can see the the, the in, install product progress of the, the steel frame that kind of hangs over the, the concrete um, infrastructure or, or a skeleton of the building. So um, it's a very connected digital workflow that allows things to happen um, quickly. A lot of things are, are shop fabricated nowadays and brought on site, um, almost like a, a menu that you can order from and, and uh, it all gets kind of gets delivered and uh, bolted together and, and voila, you have a building. Mm -hmm. And again, um, so this, these are their models. The, these are the subcontractors' models. They used um, the design team's models, so they used TT's model, presumably. Yep. Um, and is that, that maybe TT's floor as well? So they used probably both of those things. And then they built their own model to their own specifications. Um, and then again, uh, coordinating all this stuff and making sure that everything fit they go out to the field. Are they still GPS locating all the connection points and so forth? Yep, yep. All those embeds are coordinated with the, the concrete installer. Um, the starting point is the structural uh, Revit model. Uh, it's taken into whichever package the, the steel guy is working in. In this case, it's uh, Tecla Steel mm -hmm. or Tecla Structure. And they add all of the connection designs, all of the bolting patterns, the gusset plates, on and on uh, that the structural engineers do not model and that's all kind of sent back to us to confirm that their their thinking matches our design intent mm -hmm. uh, including including even edge of slab plans uh, for that matter and it's all kind of overlaid uh, to to um, confirm design to um, installation procedures and then they start to fabricate as soon as we're uh, in agreement and uh, away we go so I mean the interesting part here that presumably architects have nothing to do with is the idea that you know um, the GC here is working with um, subcontractors who are capable of producing these kinds of models because even though it's 2016 um, you know um, you know presumably not the majority of, of subcontractors can work like this. So can you talk about how, I mean, I don't know, um, um, when was the GC uh, involved in this project, presumably early on, and how is it that, um, that, uh, that they uh, sort of endeavored to go find folks who could work digitally like this? Sure, so um, as I mentioned, Del University of Delaware wanted the, the best team to come together to build this building mm -hmm. and um, Whiting Turner was the construction manager that they selected and they were picked uh, fairly early on in design so they definitely were coming to project meetings to listen to our uh, design process, kind of get a sense of our methodology, how we were making decisions and why and that kind of gave them an insight into uh, how we work and, and the, the things that were going to be important in the building to, to the, everybody, including the client. Um, and as a result, the, when it came time to establish a GMP and select sub and subcontractors, they made sure that all of these subs were going to be using digital technologies to do their uh, work as well. So they, in the contracts, all mean that they were going to have um, uh, BIM, infrastructure, BIM um, services in place so that they could deliver, for instance, their steel or their curtain wall or their building cladding systems um, in a package that would coordinate in Navisworks. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, so I mean, in, in many ways, that's kind of where the rubber meets the road. That's how you, that's how you get something that you know you're able to talk about like this. Is you have the and in your in your case, you had a construction manager. Um, who's sort of quarterbacking the whole the whole thing, 
Um, and so it's their contracts that they're sending out uh, and the requirements they're putting in those agreements that is resulting in you know, subcontractors who can produce digital models like this. Correct, yes. Okay. Um, I, it's a, sort of a, a forced, forced marriage of, of um, technologies to, to uh, at the ensure an outcome, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think... What are the... Um, um, here you're talking about the, the prefabricated pieces here. I mean, how much of this is, is prefabricated? I mean, is it like this entire kind of section here or, or what's actually prefabricated here? Yeah, those those whole um, we call them outriggers. Those whole outrigger sections were all shop fabricated and right. then so welded like in place. This whole yep. sort of section here, and then the one below it, and so forth. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, a lot of that stuff was all shop fabbed, mm -hmm. uh, and then kind of bolt, bolted and or welded in place mm -hmm. uh, onto the main structural components. Okay, and then these guys are sort of infilled the the vertical sections here. Yeah, uh, even even a lot of that uh, the in, the vertical sections were all shop shop installed um, in that you know a crane just holds it in place while things are, are welded and and uh, it's uh, all set and on to the next section.